Welcome to part two of upgrading my network and in this video we're going to take a look at the physical devices and how we get them set up and getting the overall console set up within Unify OS. So in front of me right here I have the Dream Machine Pro Max, 24 port Pro Max switch, we have the Keystone patch panel and we have a U7 Pro Max. So we're going to show, I'm going to show you how to get all of this set up and then we're going to jump over to the computer and have a quick look at how to get it all configured and set up within there and then I'm going to physically mount it in my unit itself so you can see how it all goes together. But I'll do a very brief explanation at the start on how we put it all together. So at the bottom we have the main gateway which is the device that actually does all the routing and your security and all the rest of it. And on the front we have two 10 gig SFP plus ports, we have a WAN port, now these are all remappable, so you can actually change these to whatever you want, LAN, WAN. You can have up to two WAN connections, so you can choose them. And we have eight gigabit ports on the front as well. We also have two hard drives in here, so what I'm gonna do is get these set up as well. Now for my case specifically, I'm actually gonna use these ports both for LAN, because I have a 24 port switch and I have a 16 port switch. So they're both gonna go into these connections here, and we'll have a look at that in just a second. But let's imagine this is my internet connection. So we're gonna go straight into our WAN port like so. Now my UDM Pro Max has an internet connection. Obviously there needs to be some element of configuration that needs to be done, but we'll look at that in just a second. Next, we're gonna connect up the SFP Plus ports. Now to do that, we need to take out the two 10 gig SFP Plus ports, because ultimately you can go from an ethernet port, two and a half gig to one of these gigabit ports, but ultimately you wanna try and maximize your connectivities between these devices. So we have a half a meter DAC cable. So it's literally a small device. We take off these ends and they slide straight in. So we have one that goes down here. We can pop the second one in just like so, and you'll hear that little click once it goes in. So that's these two now connected. Now the next part is how do you get the rest of your house connected? So you would in one central location have a bunch of ethernet cables that are coming in and they would then need terminating. And that's where this little device comes in to make it neat and tidy. So on the back of the panel, now some of you are probably gonna come for me in the comments on this, but these are pass through keystone jacks. So they have RJ45 connections on both sides, but they are CAT6A. And all you do is you grab these and you just push this through like so, and you'll hear that click. And you can populate all of these along here. And I've just done three for the time being, and when we take it over there, we'll populate the rest. So let me show you a quick example of this. So this is your network connectivity coming in. We just say these are all your ethernet cables, and all of them get patched straight into the back here. I probably should have gone the other side just to show you the best example and how neat it can look. And then we have the ether lighting cables. So we're gonna go from here straight to here. There you go, that's popped in there. And we can pop this one down here. There we go. And that's how you connect up all of these cables that come into one central location. You can go ahead and patch those in. Now, in terms of the Wi-Fi access point, it'll be the same thing. There'll be a cable that comes in to the Wi-Fi access point and you then just need to pop it into here and connect it up to your switch. And then we'll do all the configuration on that. So let's go and quickly do that one. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm popping this right here. And there we go. Now we're gonna get this all powered up. You can do this beforehand or you can do it after, it's entirely up to you. When I do get this racked up over there, we will get everything plugged in, including the 16 port switch. But just for this initial demo, this gives you a rough idea on how to get it all connected together. We're gonna to go and plug these in now. So we'll pop the one in at the bottom. So you'll probably see that one come on just here. I'm not sure you'll be able to see that in the video. You might not, it might just be just outside it, but that's powered on. But you'll definitely see this one coming on because you'll see the RGB lights flying across the front. Let's now head across to the computer and see how we connect this all up. The final thing you need to do is for the Dream Machine Pro Max, get this connected straight to your computer and we'll do that just via an ethernet cable plugged in right here. Now that everything is all connected and I like to keep it on the desk next to me just in case I need to do any tweaks or move any cables around, it gives me the opportunity to do that before we put it all up in the cabinet and it's out the way. So to get into the site manager first, the first thing you need to do is just type in https colon forward slash forward slash unify 
and let's press enter and then you're greeted with the dream machine pro max login and you can see it's the right model we then go ahead and give your console a name so this is going to be home for me at this point if you want to restore from a backup you can do but i'm taking you guys through a fresh complete install and having everything set up brand new so we can go through it all together but if you want to see a video on the restoration of it we can go ahead and do that let me know down in the comments and i'll see if i can put that together you then log in and you can create this with an account or without an account so there's a button at the bottom so it says right there proceed without a ui account but i already have one so i'm going to go ahead and log in and for me to do that i need to go ahead and press this sign in button just down here and then it changes to this that you can already register with an account that you have. Once you have signed in, again, it gives you the option to restore from a backup, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and there's a button behind me that says continue without backup. And it's now going to go off and run a speed test. And there we go. That's complete. So 1087 megabits per second down and 77 megabits per second upload. So let's click next. And that's going to go off and set up the Unify console. And then we'll come back and have a look and see what we need to configure within the console itself. Straight away, before I even got started into the OS settings, it's already doing a console update. So it's going to give me the latest and greatest before we even get started, which is probably what you want to make sure you have. So that was going to be one of my talking points within this would be to make sure everything is up to date. But we'll see what latest updates we have in here at this point. So that's all updated now and the Unify OS version is 4.0.6. The first thing I like to do is make sure the auto update is turned off. The last thing you want is for this to automatically update and ruin your network. However, that being said, you are welcome to leave it on. Some people do let it run overnight and let it update automatically. So if you're someone that just wants to update it and leave it and let it do its thing, then you can leave that ticked. I also like to change to the release candidate again. This isn't the fully generally available software, so this could still have a few bugs in it. So we'll leave that choice down to you whether you wish to do that. Next, I would choose the applications I'm going to be running on this system. So I'm going to be running Protect, Access and Network and potentially Talk as well. Once I get my hands on some phones, I will be running that within here as well. So I want to make sure all four of these are installed and updated. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with a console. I'm going to click Update. And then I'm going to go through one by one and update these applications. So Unify Network is going to 8.4.62 and then we'll install Protect, Access and Talk. While those are behind me getting upgraded and installed and having all the latest and greatest, let's run through some of the other settings that I generally set up with my console. First, we have the admins. We have the list of admins on here. And if you want to make any admins, you just click add and you can type in all the details and what access they have. I've seen some posts recently that were asking about roles and how that works and setting up individual cameras. We will run through that in the protect setup, but you can go ahead and add some roles in here for custom and then select the devices that they want to be able to see. Or even within the network, you can choose view only site admin and again with the Unify OS settings as well. So you can do those all within the roles. We then have users, so you can also add users. So you don't have to have admins, you can have users and you can import them via CSV with this file just here or with this plus button just here and click import users. And along with that, you can go ahead and create some groups as well. So if you have multiple users within there, for example, maybe you want security staff or you want someone at a group of family members or whatever it is, you can go ahead and group your users within here. You can also group admins or as I mentioned, whatever you need to have for your specific setup. Then we have Unify Identity. Now, this is a whole different thing in itself. I'm probably going to do a video on this on its entirety because there's a couple of different options that you can choose within here and what some of the benefits are. For a home user, generally, is it something that you would set up? Probably not. When you're looking at businesses that have more of a scalable plan, then yes, it's probably something you want to look at. But if you want to see this in another video, let me know down in the comments. And I probably will say that in quite a few parts of this video. Or the next video so do forgive me if i do mention it a number of times you can also then group your unified devices now we haven't adopted anything yet so there's no devices right here we have the console settings which is probably the most important part of this i would say so the auto update now it's set weekly at the moment it's entirely up to you how you wish to do it weekly is probably enough as you're generally running your unified os ecosystem you're not going to be making a lot of changes but if you find initially as i'm getting everything set up you're going to be making lots of changes just press the backup now button and that's it. Then we have the time zone location, kind of self-explanatory there. Make sure you set your time zone. 
screen brightness so you can change this at night time where the night mode reduces the brightness so it turns off during these hours that's between 10 p.m and 8 a.m if you ever contact ubiquity support or if you ever wish to look at the support file you can go ahead and download that just here and it does take a few seconds to download so just click that button remote access if you wish to leave that on you can leave that on or if you just want to be able to access the console directly you can do that just from here there's a few other tick boxes underneath which is direct remote control where you would enable port 443 so you can access it directly analytics and improvements and if you want to enable ssh to be able to ssh into the console you would do that right here the final thing that i'll mention on this page is if you want to transfer ownership so if you're setting this up for someone else you can go ahead and click this button and it transfers the ownership away from you we then have maps system logs we have all the logs that are in here which is showing what's going on the backups and finally within the system log you have the push notifications now you can run through these and see what you wish to set up and you have two options when it comes to it you can have a push notification on your app or you can have an email now it's entirely up to you you go through do what you wish to do i generally have the update available so i have it alert me when there's an application update or there's a console update i don't necessarily need to know when it's updated but i do have it when there is one available just so i know if you want to know a bit more about the admin side from a security perspective you can go ahead and turn these on and finally if you want to know about your backup so if you want to know when it's been created or someone's restored it you can go ahead and enable those notifications too so there we go they're all updated now they're all installed would need to set up talk and access but those are going to be for a future video before we go and install this in the rack let me just take you through to network so i click straight on it and then we go to unified devices and we can see the three devices that i have plugged into the network at the moment we have the 24 pro max we have the 16 pro max and the u7 pro max and simply you would just go off and adopt all of them but before we go ahead and finish this all up let's go ahead and get this installed on the rack you can see this is all empty we've taken it all out we have all the cables at the back just there and now we'll start going from the top down so i'll probably put the udm up here then put some patch cables then the 24 port switch then we might have a gap here then we start working our way down maybe popping in our 16 port switch as well somewhere along here so we now have the udm pro max set in at the top here and the 24 port pro max here and um, we'll keep going we'll put in the patch panel here now where we can connect all of them up to here most of these cables back here We'll go into the back of this patch panel right here and then feed into the 24 port switch. And we're looking a little bit better here now. I know it, this is definitely going to trigger a lot of people. Uh, the fact that I have no rack mount here. I am getting one uh, and I will be fitting that soon. And also this second patch panel. Uh, I'm going to be getting another one of these to match this all up the only thing i couldn't find a silver one of in the uk is a nice pdu so if anybody knows of one let me know down in the comments now let's start connecting these up for anybody that has been following this from the start you'll know that i did have some ocd panels as well and unfortunately i don't have anywhere to put them so maybe i need to upgrade to a bigger rack just so i can use them but we're going to go ahead and start with connecting the Dream Machine Pro Max to the 24 port switch. That can go right there and then that is connected. And then the second part is getting the 16 port Pro Max also connected. So that is now all connected to this. We have an internet connection in here. We have these two switches connected. Now all I'm going to do now is go along here and get these all completed. So let's go and start that there we go so that is the complete finished product you can see this now again another trigger warning i am getting some more of these white patch cables so these will change eventually at the moment they are a bit blue but overall i think it looks quite nice so i want us to all join together as we turn this on and let's make sure it all works so let's go ahead and power this up yeah that looks good to me so that's all powering up right there we have the rgb lights we can hear the fans kicking in briefly and then they will quieten down after a little while. Join me in part two where we set up all the network configurations going from start to finish. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe because this is going to be a mini series that we're going to put all of this together.